Maybe we can get a little help from rent, some of the land costs. Hi, everyone. Matthew Cruz at Comstock Investments. We need to talk about fertilizer costs for 2026 already. Before I do that, let me give a quick shout out to what's going on in Brazil with their soybean planting right now. So overall, they're about 11% done in Brazil. It's going very quickly, slightly ahead of schedule in terms of their historical average. Most of the progress you can see here is in the state of Paraná and Mato Grosso, 37%, almost 40% done probably already in the state of Paraná. It's been raining very well there, especially in the south. It's also been helping the first crop corn that's being planted in Hujasul, but they typically, it's one of the last states for soybeans to get planted there in the south, but it is helping their first crop of corn. A lot of eyes are, of course, focused on Mato Grosso for its size, and they are planting very quickly. I think I've had some people say that maybe a little too quick, that there's parts of central Mato Grosso that are almost half done already, and they actually stopped their planters and tractors shut down for a little while, and it's kind of turned dry this week, and so they're concerned there might be some replanting, but we do see some weather coming back here in the in the forecast later into next week through the 21st of October. We don't see the rainfall reaching over into the northeast part of Brazil in this Mato Piba region, Bahia, Tocantins, Maranhão, Piauí. Collectively, those states can represent almost 30% of the soybean production, but it's still early. A lot of those states typically plant a little bit later. They plant the bulk of their crop in November versus the center west region plants most of their crop in the month of October. And so it looks like they're getting a head start. We'll have to see if there's any replanting. We'll keep you updated on that. This is a little bit longer term forecast. You do see rainfall anomaly picking up here in the center part of the state, but you still see here in the southern part of Mato Grosso, here in Mato Grosso do Sul, and even parts into the northern half of Goiás, it still leans drier. Now, it doesn't mean they're not getting rain, but it just means they're getting a little bit less than average. So it's still not quite as widespread. It's so far as just mostly the heavy rainfall is concentrated in Paraná and southern part of Brazil. Again, the northeast part of Brazil remains dry. This is through November 4th, but a good chunk of Mato Grosso is getting rain, just not all of it yet. And so that's kind of what we're looking at. We'll keep you updated. I want to focus on the cost of production that despite the low commodity prices, typically what happens when you get a low commodity prices. One of the positive benefits of that is input costs tend to come down. Cost of production comes down generally rather slowly. They don't necessarily drop very fast from year to year, but we're not seeing that so much, at least initially for 2026. We're already at the point where we're at harvest and I'm starting to collect some fertilizer bids for next year. And as you probably heard, a lot of those costs are much higher for next year already. But to, you can see how fertilizer is a fairly sizable cost production here. This is what the American Farm Bureau put together. They have it listing is it higher than rent and seed costs. And so it makes a big impact on the bottom line going forward. But these are just some numbers that I've put together for some different bids that I thought was interesting. Now, this is obviously going to change depending on what location you're at. But Last year, this is the prices in this category here in 2025, what I paid for MAP, potash, and my nitrogen using a 32%. These are comparable numbers to what I'm looking at for bids for the 2026 crop. And typically, I look to lock in some of this at the end of the year for next year already. You can see there's a big jump here in MAP at 875 compared to $740 a ton. That's an 18% increase. Potash is at 489 compared to 430 last year. That's had the least amount of increase, but still increased nonetheless at 14%. The biggest increase, which you know I think obviously has the biggest impact, is nitrogen costs at $440 compared to $292 last year. That's a 51% increase year over year, despite having lower commodity prices. Now, when I break that down on my farm, using the rates that I apply, I try to determine, okay, what does that mean in profitability or extra dollars and cents per acre? And so now first off, our suppliers already switched from using MAP to TSP, which is a triple super phosphate. And, and so that cheapens up the phosphorus cost a little bit, but it still adds $7 an acre between those increases in the phosphorus and the potash. But you can see here the biggest one is the, the that liquid 32% as $27 an acre, just in those two. I typically will add some sulfur and some zinc as well, but I left those out. They're a little bit smaller line item. But just adding those, you know, three N, P, and K together, the difference there, you know, my if I were to lock this in right now, 
my cost of fertilizer is going to go from $171 an acre last year to $205 per acre. That's an increase of $34 an acre on corn following soybeans. Now it's even a little bit higher on corn following corn, just because I'm going to use a higher rate, usually 240 units of nitrogen per acre. And this is for the removal rate that I'm using, the fertilizer ration, 180 units for nitrogen, 70 for phosphorus, 60 for potassium, 20 on sulfur. So you can see it adds $34 an acre, pretty hefty increase just for that one light item. So we have to produce, you know, at $4 a bushel, you got to produce basically another eight and a half bushels per acre just to make up for that single increase. So maybe we can make it up in other areas. I don't know. I know chemicals have come down in the past, but I'm not sure they can come down a whole lot more than what they have. Seed never seems to go back down at a minimum. It'll probably be the same price or a little bit more. You know, maybe we can get a little help from rent. Some of the land costs we'll have to see. But, you know, starting out, it's just, it's kind of frustrating because we're in a poor profitability environment right now. Obviously, I don't need to tell you that, but and it looks like it could potentially get worse, you know, based off some of these numbers that I'm seeing. So I just wanted to share that with you. You know, there's a couple of potential solutions to this. People naturally want to know, okay, what do we do about it? Should we just cut our fertilizer out? You know, and that's certainly an option. I'm sure some people will do that. You know, I'm not sure you can cut your nitrogen all that much. You could probably get by on a lower phosphorus ration and that might help. But again, that's the smaller part of that increase of $7 an acre. It's the nitrogen, which is a lot harder to cut and makes up a bigger part of that cost. You know, one thing that I like to do is ban my fertilizer and so by using strip till and banding it in the row and kind of concentrating that fertilizer, I think you could probably get by with a little bit less potentially. So that's just one option, but I know not everyone likes to strip till or does strip till. Another option could be to try and use some manure, although that's not necessarily cheap either. But depending on your situation, you know, there could be a feedlot that wants to maybe remove some corn stalks and in exchange give you some manure. And depending on how much tons you're getting in that trade, it might make sense. And obviously you got to take into account the nutrient value in those stocks as well. Otherwise you're just kind of robbing Peter to pay Paul. So that's kind of the situation that we're in right now. Pretty disappointing. But if anyone has any other better ideas or options, I'd love to hear how you're kind of handling this situation and what you think of it. So, but this is it's kind of the numbers looking at my farm right now and the rates that I use. But thank you very much and have a good day. Futures trading involves risk. The risk of loss in trading futures and or options is substantial and each investor and or trader must consider whether this is a suitable investment. Past performance is not indicative of future results.